Well, good afternoon. I'm Kathleen Dudley. I'm coming from New Mexico, and I'm speaking today with Dr. Chris Lauthert. And good afternoon, Chris. How are you doing? Doing great, Kathleen. Spring is here in the mountains of Virginia. <laughs> All right. We just had snowfall and bitter cold temperatures, so we're still in the midst of winter. Yeah, we're not out of it yet. We might get a, a quick one here and there, but things are starting to pop open now. All right. Very fine. Good. Well, Chris, this is our seventh interview. Mm, very good. Lucky number seven. Yes. And, <laughs> and what a delight. Yes. The, the last... Um, the last interviews on skin were quite uh, revolutionary. So thank you for that. Excellent. Now, today you mentioned that you were going to do a brief summary of German new medicine and then take us into symptoms of illness or symptoms of healing. And you're going to describe what you mean by that. So right. if you could take it away, Chris. Excellent. Yes, I have some slides again prepared today, and um, we're going to look at the, the beautiful scientific knowledge of German new medicine, the health and healing paradigm of German new medicine, as described and presented to us well over 30 years now by Dr. Riker Geert Hammer from Germany. And uh, Yes, like, as you said, this is our, our seventh talk today. And what I'm going to do is look at symptoms, physical symptoms, and define the lens in which we have the opportunity to look at these symptoms through. It's important that you define, we define the lens and look at these symptoms in a way that is real, that is uh, part of the natural symbiotic matrix, matrix we call this planet. These biological programs that are, have been designed to assist us during unexpected distress emerged into this habitat and we can observe them not only in ourselves in our own psyche but in other people's psyche and body and also in the non-human world we can observe these in our animals the non-human animals the difference between the non-human world in the human animal world, which we are, Kathleen, we are human animals living a life on this beautiful planet, in this beautiful matrix of life, this symbiotic web of life. But what makes us different from the non-human animal world is the power of description. The power of description. The human animal is able to describe life. The human animal is able to define the syntax, to describe the natural phenomenon of life. And so we're going to get into defining the lens. First and foremost, define the lens. How are we looking? What lens are we looking through when we observe life on this planet? What lens are we looking through when we look at our physical symptoms? What are we, what lens are we looking through um, when we are in the presence of a loved one, a child, a family member that is experiencing symptoms? symptoms in the physical on the physical body but then also on the psyche level right and so let's define the lens today we have a choice now with the presence of dr hammer's system of german medicine we now have a choice 
we can choose to look through the lens of disease, illness, when we describe our symptoms. Or we can look through the, the lens of healing, the innate capacity of our body to heal. We can agree on this, but we can go deeper, deeper into this and define what we really are seeing or experiencing not only at the physical body level, at the organ level, but at the brain level and also at the psyche level. It's important to keep those three components floating in your mind today as we continue to dive deeper and deeper into what Dr. Hammer has given us. We want to continue to recognize what has already been in front of us, what has already been, we already intuitively felt, but now we can further define this, define the phenomenon that has been called disease for centuries now. We can now define this phenomenon with a different lens, right? Well, look at that, the beautiful blue planet that we inhabit right now, at this moment, right now, we find ourselves on as human animals living in this matrix of life. So it's a very common question as we dive into the mysteries of life. Well, how did life emerge on this planet? How did we become part of this planet? Who are we? What are we? Right? And so we can look here at this very common picture and we can ask these questions. We could also ask, how did the planet come to be? And so these are very common questions that I know you and I both have asked in our journey through life, and so many else have asked. I want to propose something here right in the very beginning of our talk, and, and I'm going to propose it, and I'm just going to leave it, and leave it floating during our discussion today on German New Medicine. What if the genetic template of the human animal, which we are, we are animals first and foremost, but we are exceptional animals on this planet. We're not superior, but we are exceptional. And as I said, we have the power of description what if life on this planet emerges? Let's just start with this baseline, that life on the planet emerges from a symbiotic matrix. Let's start right there. Let's say that, the, that life emerges from the womb of the symbiotic matrix and that our genetic template that we all carry actually originated somewhere else in this galaxy that we inhabit. Somewhere else, our genetic template was designed and then seeded into this galaxy that we find ourselves in, the Milky Way galaxy. And this is a very, this is a, uh, a very common and uh, accepted idea within biology. It's known as panspermia, that uh, the planets inha get inhabited because of propagules in, you know, coming from outer space, so-called, and seeding different planets throughout this galaxy. So what if? These propagules 
came and seeded this planet and a large majority of the propagules seeded the blue areas of our planet, the water. Because most of the planet is made of and composed of water, right? And As then are some we. of the, excuse me? As are we. Sure, right. And then there was other parts of the planet that were seeded, like the polar ice caps. And like the Amazon basin in Africa. And these different areas of the planet are, makes up the habitat that the human animal finds themselves in. All the different races of the human animal find themselves in this particular habit right, habitat right now. And the source of their life, our life, comes from the planet herself, commonly called Mother Nature. So what if these special biological programs that we carry in our genetic DNA, in our DNA, at every cell in our body, comes from the source of our life? Well, I, I think that's a very good one to float because cool. many, Excellent. you know, for my own self, given very recent um, inquiries that I have done, um, I have I have great questions as I've had for a well, I guess most recently because the old paradigm has been exploded, but I'm less likely to think that it came from a from a uh, another galaxy or that it was seeded i'm more likely to think uh from the standpoint of this beautiful mother nature that is fully fulfilled and fully originating from the creator it's the creator that i do not understand but that the that that all of the diversity exists here on this on this in mother nature and we are a part of it that's as far as i can go but i'll let the other float but it it it's sure, yeah not yeah quite I, as comfortable I, I, but... I, I sense that there could be um and this is uh again the centuries and centuries of programming right just the word creator creates a, a schism in the biological psyche because so much has been said about the off-planet creator God, right? The male off-planet deity, right? That's exactly correct. And that, that concept, what, two, three thousand years old that uh, sure. John sure. Lamb Lash introduces us to and how that whole co-opting came about sure uh, so, so we I'm can not, we, we, i'm not we, referring we, to that creator i'm just, right I, I i know you're not so for our audience what we're going to do today is bring it right to here on this planet in this habitat knowing the source of our life right we know the source of our life it's the planet itself. It sustains us. We don't have a life of our own. The planet sustains every aspect, every process of our, our being, including the biological special programs. Okay. So one of the things that uh, I've, I've found over the years in teaching and sharing German and medicine is a lot of these other ideas that have been propagated, pushed, the dogmas, creates a little bit of a confusion with, bi with understand, learning our bi our, the biological laws, the natural laws. And it, it's definitely a, the product of religion and we can lump in the, the whole new age religion with it but this is what creates the confusion. And so, you know, one of the things that uh, prior to me recognizing 
the insidious nature of this idea that there's an off-planet creator God that punishes the same creatures that apparently he created. This, this, this goes deep into our psyche, our collective psyche. And so when people begin to learn about the special biological laws, a lot of times people are, well, we are made in his image. No, no, no. There's the mistake. There's the error. And it's a deceitful error. And so we want to bring it back. And this is what I, I'm doing is, again, it's a framing. I want you to frame our current discussion within the habitat that we find ourselves in right here, right now, as human animals. And frame it within the, the symbiotic nature, the symbiotic matrix of life. And stay here, stay right here, right now. And know that you are a human animal that has a story. And that story is intimately connected with your biology intimately connected with your biology and this is where we can explore and look at german new medicine and the application of these natural biological laws okay we first have to look at real quickly because i'm um, i'm very tired actually of even giving it any more time because of the current and as we see, it's kind of disappearing now, apparently. There's other things going on in the world stage. But the standard medical dogma that is pushed by the pharmaceutical industry and the universities is, a is, is the germ theory based on Louis Pasteur's work. And it turns out, again, go do the research. It turns out that all of Louis Pasteur's apparently scientific research was fraud, was fraudulent research, pseudoscience. Go take a look at it. Take a read of the private science of Louis Pasteur by Professor Giesen out of Princeton University, where on Louis Pasteur's deathbed, he admitted that he was a fraud. Then we go into who was against Louis Pasteur, right? The people that were speaking out about Louis Pasteur and how he was uh, incorrect in his assumptions. We got Bouchamp, right? The terrain theory, bio terrain theory. And so what we're seeing here, again, you could probably tell here that I'm having some technical difficulties with uh, my slides again, but being that is as it is, there we go. We got Claude Bernard. These are names that are thrown around often now after the last two years. And it's scientists that challenge the prevailing dogma of Louis Pasteur. And th these are scientists that were observing the microbes and the environment. Right, the observation of the microbes in the environment, and we can see we, he was already Pasteur was challenged back then that the microbes were not the culprit that was creating the symptoms that people were experiencing as disease, but Bouchamp and Bernard were saying it was the environment that was creating the disease, that was create there was an imbalance in the environment. So, again, we. Uh, you know, looking through the lens of disease, it's natural that these gentlemen made these observations, right? It's natural. Now we come ahead to Dr. Rika Gerd Hammer. And what did he demonstrate? Well, he took his knowledge of the brain and his knowledge that the brain controls all the physiology of the body. It's the biocomputer. And it regulates all the functions of the body. He knew that. 
and he began doing CT scans and he started to map out the brain in relation to the, the organs that it controls. But he also took into consideration the psyche, the psyche of his patients. It wasn't a separate entity, separate from the brain and the organ, separate from the brain and body, but it was a, it's an integral component of the whole organism. And what he demonstrates is that the psyche and brain and body operate on, le on simultaneous levels. And we can show what happens. We can discuss, describe what happens on all three levels simultaneously. Ultimately, and this is the paradigm shift. This is where you take that frame and you move it. You take that different lens now and you look through that lens and all so-called disease now are special biological programs designed specifically designed to support the individual during unexpected distress, unexpected distress. What Dr. Hammer gives us are these five biological laws and we've discussed this in the past. Today, I'm really going to focus on the second one this special biological program runs on two in two phases. But we also will show and talk again about the first one, the unexpected distressful experience. This is the key. This is the key. There are certain events that happen in our life from very early on all the way into adulthood that come out of nowhere. They're unexpected. We had no control over them. It's life playing itself out. We don't have to get metaphysical about why it's happening at this point in time. We just know that something unexpected happens that triggers a special biological program that's designed to assist us to help us through something we had no control over. And these special biological programs are grounded in our biology. And ultimately, the special biological program enhances the biological functioning of the specific organ that is affected by or impacted by that unexpected distress. So, so Chris, what you're saying is that we just happen to be here and unbeknownst to us, we are confronted unexpectedly and that our own physiology, our own, our own makeup um, is prepared in its own innate way. We're ready. To deal with all these unexpected affronts that occur. Sure. That, that, that the human body is, is designed for this very interaction with life. And the psyche. And the psyche, yes. And the brain. Very important. It's the three. They're all, the, the, the psyche, the bio, I like to say the biological psyche. Because okay. again, we have to be careful that we don't muddy the waters with all the psychological bullshit from decades and decades, right, of describing the psyche, what it is and how it functions and yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Seriously. We got to break away from everything we've been told about the psyche and begin again at that baseline 
This is the bot. We're talking, we're describing the biological psyche. Yes, our story plays a role in how our biologically biological psyche subjectively perceives the unexpected distressing situation. Our story has a ha, is a is a part of that biological psyche. But I can tell you after over 15 years of living life with these biological principles and reflecting on my own personal life and working through my own biological conflicts and at the same time work helping and guiding others through their biological conflicts. I can assure you that you would have you would be in a better advantageous position. You'll be in an advantage, a better position to handle what's going on right here, right now in one's life. If we kind of bring that focus in just a little bit narrow, right? So we look at, okay, what's going on within the last year? What's going on within the last week, couple days, right? So we can look at our symptoms in a more narrowed way, but not disregarding the big picture, okay? I'm not saying disregarding what happened to you in childhood or what happened to you 10 years ago or even what happened to you a couple months ago. It's, it's part of your story, but you will find, people will find that they'll get a more of a handle on what is happening now if we narrow that focus and look and take action on the things that are happening now. These experiences that are happening may and they may not have, re have resolved yet. And this is what we're going to get into. Because there is a difference between being in the conflict active phase, which is that first phase of, of, of the biological program, in the healing phase. And this is where we're going to spend some time now, okay? But what I'm, I want to uh, prep, you know, before we get into it, like I said, I, it, from an application standpoint, because I, I get asked this often, how do we apply this? How do we apply this? How do we apply this, right? Do I need somebody else to guide me through it? Well, you may, you may need, somebody that has a, a very solid working knowledge of German new medicine, right? And there's so many people out there now, thankfully, thankfully. I can speak for myself. My aim, my intention when I work one-on-one -on -one with people or even in a group setting where we have our study group here that we do and I give lectures, my intention is to give the pass along the information, the knowledge of German new medicine, so people can take it and make it their own, and get to work with what's happening now with in their life, right? Unfortunately, oh, actually, I, I, I don't want to use that word anymore. Actually, I'm I'm getting rid of unfortunately from my syntax, but oftentimes. People discover German new medicine when their backs are against the wall. They got serious conditions going on. They got cancers. They got intense symptoms. And oftentimes people do come across German new medicine at that point in their life. And I get it. It's very difficult to make a paradigm shift when you are in the throes of these unexpected experiences. I get it. And so my uh, intention for the last over 15 years now is to provide the medicine to people that are in good positions of health and well-being. They got great lifestyles, they're chugging along and they got 
the the bandwidth, let's say, to sit down and study, because it does take study. It takes time to learn this system. It does, and we got to be. And I said this prior in other talks. We have to be patient with oneself as we learn this, but we have to take the responsibility ourselves to dive deep into the work and learn it for ourselves so that we can take it with us the rest of our life and we will be self-sufficient. Well, Chris, I like what you say about the questions about how do you actually apply it? Sure. So I'm going to say, would you take us that next step? Because Absolute. I've Absolute. had that question myself for some time. Sure, and it's a natural. It's a natural question that arises as we go into German new medicine. It's the yes. application of these biological principles. Right. Right. And so, this is what we'll 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 talk now. We'll get into this now. The the meat and potatoes, and a, and and as I describe the meaning of the symptoms and why the symptoms are happening. We will look at how we can apply that awareness to our benefit, to give us better odds, let's say, of getting through whatever we're going through, okay? So here we're looking at an image that I hope everybody has printed out and, and has placed on their refrigerator. I said this uh, months and months ago, I think it might've been in our first, uh, our talk way back when Kathleen, but this is actually, and it's a, it's a, a simplified uh, image of the compass of German new medicine. This gives us, this gives us our direction. It gives us our bearings. It anchors us so we can look ahead, right? Look ahead at to what is coming possibly or what may be coming as we move through the unexpected distress, okay? That first triangle is the unexpected shock. The DHS, the Dirk Hammer syndrome, in honor of Dr. Hammer's son, who died tragically in the arms of his father and was the catalyst for the massive discovery, the momentous discoveries that Dr. Hammer made after the tragic and unfortunate, uh, the tragic and distressful circumstances of losing a loved one, okay? This DHS is unexpected and highly subjective. It's a subjective experience and we will all perceive this experience, this unexpected experience in different ways based upon our upbringing, our religious beliefs, our spiritual beliefs, our culture, our society, what type of family we were born into, our ancestral history, okay? It's very subjective. And that subjectivity explains why certain people will develop intestinal issues versus say, let's say lung issues. And so at the moment of the DHS, the psyche subconsciously now, the moment it happens, this, the, the psyche registers the event and simultaneously activates a biological program in response to that in seconds to that distressful situation. It impacts the brain it impacts the body, and here we go. We are now in this process. As you can see, that blue wavy 
line. We're in it now. The waves of distress, you know, coming and going. We know the feeling when something really rocks our boat. And so what we are vision, what we see here is a description of what happens at the autonomic nervous system level. And this is what we call in the beginning phase here, the conflict active phase. Now, once we get our bearings, let's just say, let's keep with this metaphor. We get our bearings, the, the boat settles down a little bit and we figure out in our own way, in our own intuitive way and rational and logical way. It takes both. It takes logic and it takes intuition. Left brain, right brain to come to a resolution about some experience that we have no, had no control over and bring about what we call resolution. And resolution is that critical moment that sets into action the natural healing phase of the body, brain, and psyche. All three levels, again, move into the healing phase. Just as all three levels were involved in that conflict active phase, all three levels are involved in the healing phase. And so we're going to look deeper now. We're going to continue to dive deeper into this. And we're going to look at specifically, again, the autonomic nervous system. And we have three terms here that Dr. Hammer uses to define what or describe the autonomic nervous system. Now, the first term is normotonia. And this is what we experience in the normal day night rhythm. Okay. And so as life is going along and the boat is just cruising and it's in the flow and it's not really rocking and we're just guiding along, we naturally have this day night rhythm where around four o'clock in the morning or so, our sympathetic nervous system starts to upregulate and we get to work and we're busy and we're hustling and we're, we're, we're living life. And then as five, around five o'clock or so going into, you know, the early evening around eight o'clock, the nervous system shifts into vagatonia, often described as parasympathetic. And so we go into that rest and relaxation phase. This is typical. Now, some human animals get busy at night, right? They're nocturnal. It's okay. And that, that's part of the who they are and stuff. But normally, let's just kind of keep it the framework here. No, we have this normal day night cycle and we typically get into tune with that, right? And it's very important that we're in tune with that. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, 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 the natural light is what gets them going, not some screen or phone that that gets them going, but the natural light, the sunrise in the morning, and then the sunset brings them down into that restful relaxation, right? So this is part of the practical application of German new medicine. If, if uh, you want to get more in tune and work on getting more in tune, just pay attention to the normal day-night rhythms of our habitat, right? Let's just, you can start there. But what happens when that unexpected distress hits, okay? That DHS, that boom, that uncontrollable experience comes about. And we get into what Dr. Hammer called lasting sympaticotonia. So we're in that first phase, that blue area there, and we're riding the waves now. What do we experience physically? Well, we're going to have a nervous restlessness. We're nervous. We're jacked up, and we we're, we're we can't we can't we can't you know sit still, 
right? We're real nervous, jittery. We've all felt this. This is nothing out of the ordinary, right? This is a common symptom. We also will have cold hands. Our hands, our extremities get cold in that conflict active phase. And it's because the vascular system constricts when we're in lasting sympaticotonia. And that's why the hands get cold. Our heartbeat will elevate. Our blood pressure elevates. Our digestion slows down. It's not time to digest food. It's time to be alert, to be ready to get after it, whatever's, you know, whatever happens, right? Frequent urination. We feel like we have to pee all the time. There's little appetite. Again, the purpose of the little appetite is the, the body's not going to digest the food properly because it's not concerned about digestion. The psyche brain body is not concerned about digesting food. So we'll find, we'll notice that we're not really hungry. And then at the psyche level, we have this compulsive thinking. Those thoughts running in the mind that keep us up at night disturb our sleep we may be so exhausted that we fall asleep but then bing we're wide awake around two three o'clock in the morning and we're often find ourselves thinking about that distressful situation what is it? how am i going to get through this what do i need to do all right we've all been here before at the brain level we see concentric rings with the use of the CT brain scan. It's concentric rings, just like that concentric ring in the back here. It's like that unexpected distress just bing, hit, impacted the psyche and the brain and we can visualize it with the brain scan. What brilliance, Dr. Hammer, in the intuitiveness to see this, to look at this and see that this is significant. This is a significant a, a phenomenon that we're visualizing with the beautiful technology that we have right now. And he was able to map out the brain by knowing this. Now, what happens when resolution comes? And the resolution comes in a subjective way, okay? This resolution is going to come about differently for all of us, okay? Depending on how we've been trained <laughs> to handle the struggles of life, right? How we were brought up, how, what models we had to, to look at, to look towards on how they handled the struggle of life, right? Who do we look towards? Oftentimes it's our parents. We look, we, it's that model imperative and we look towards them to see how we handle certain circumstances, right? So these are all part of, again, our, bio, our biography. And so as we get into the work of German New Medicine, it can be difficult it could be daunting at times to find resolution to figure out how to get through the struggle and it may be because we haven't been taught we haven't been given the tools to be able to handle what life throws at us right but we're, it's never too late to learn it's never too late to figure it out well, Chris, so if we have the initial symptoms and we, um, and we begin to um, apply logic and intuition to resolve the shock so that we can then bring about the resolution. So that seems to me to be very much a time of being quiet and reflective and, and it could Kathleen it could what are some other ways of of 
of resolving that res to bring about resolution to bring about it right yeah it's not what we need to do to resolve it's how how can we bring it about you know right. it's not what the resolution is it's how do we come to it right this is a great this is a great question kathleen and again there's some factors here involved one of the basic factors involved is our gender are we a male or are we a female hmm. It's that simple. <laughs> it's one or the other. We don't need to complicate it. Which is it better to be, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so I can only speak for a male, but also I can, I can speak for a female in the sense that, you know, because I've worked with females in the past and have guided females in the past through this, I can come with some experience in that, but let's just start off with males. I have found for myself and other men that yes, there's a time to quiet down and go within, as they say, right? I'd like to say, there's a time to sit and be quiet and block out everything that's going on and contemplate what you need to figure out, right? So block out everything else as best we can, right? And sit in, 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 in stillness and silence and possibly contemplate it. But I have found, again, there's a place and time for that. But I have found because this energy, let's just look at it biologically here, it's lasting sympathicotonia. The sympathetic nervous system is up. We got a lot of energy building. Let's direct it. And oftentimes it's just moving, getting out there and getting physical, getting out there, working the soil, working the land, going for walks. Um, getting out and just sweating it out, right? Not necessarily, and I'm again, speaking of men, but this could be for we, with females too, but oftentimes it's not really thinking about the situation, but going out and do something, do something functional, productive, right? And get busy doing something and direct that, purposeful energy and see what happens see what pops up in the sense of resolution it could be that aha moment that you have you know you're out working the garden you're digging up the garden and you're sweating and you're getting after it and you're in the present moment and you're you know just working and working and working and all of a sudden boom you have that intuitive insight and it helps you figure out what's going on, you know, how to resolve it. And in that process, it could be really well be the resolution that you need to get you into the healing. But it also could be that downgrading effect it has. So instead of this up and down with the waves, right? Let's stay with this waves up and the fluctuation of up and down, up and down, and just all over the place, we start to steady our approach to resolution. We start to downgrade it. We talked about downgrading in the past. Sometimes people have to externalize this. They have to speak about it, get it off their chest. They got to talk to somebody about it. And again, this is another practical application. All right? But I have found in the past that oftentimes if I just push it aside and get busy doing something else, I start to get these nudges as to how to, to handle the situation. And once that resolution happens, we now go into the healing phase. And there's a whole set of symptoms that indicate to us, right? It actually, we get that nudge in our psyche, right? The biological, 
receives that nudge, that insight of resolution, you follow me? And then the physical symptoms come about and it's confirmation that you're on the right path. You're making the right decision. You're, 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 getting, you're getting through it. You're moving through it. So this is important. So when we develop the symptoms of healing, not only do, can we use that as a guide to, to confirm that we are in the healing phase and we found some resolution to that distressful situation, but we also don't panic. We don't get scared of the symptoms. We don't fear the symptoms now and we stay steady. We embrace the symptoms for what they really are. And we well, don't, if, go if ahead. I interrupt you for a second too. You know, we've been taught that all of these are disease pictures, of course. And what German New Medicine, what you're saying is that this is just the body's natural response to now take us from an, uh, an acute state into a healing phase and the body is taking care of our, our the, 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 the brain, the psyche, the, the, the body is taking care of the whole unit, the whole being, the whole human right. animal, and that it knows exactly what to do. So really what you're saying, even in the first phase is get out of the way, just allow the experience to unfold and be respectful i don't know if it's i don't know if it's about getting out of the way kathleen it's about embracing right here right now what you are experiencing right when i say get out of the way i guess i mean don't interfere allow it to happen embrace as you embrace. said embrace yeah. embrace it yeah. embrace yeah. it and recognize recognition yes. Honor, Rec honoring our body's brilliant capacity to sure. know how to how to um, how to respond um, in a loving and respectful way to these assaults that that come sure. to us. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's there's these two sets of symptoms here. You see this on the left column. These are sets of symptoms that indicate to us in reflection as we reflect on the present situation that we're in conflict activity right mm -hmm. so it it again it guides us it directs us and it this is the compass that's what the that's what a compass does it directs you in the right direction right it it gives you a way of knowing which direction to go mm -hmm. right and so this first set of symptoms the cold hands the slow digestion the compulsive thinking directs us towards resolution, right? We're not, we're embracing it, yes, and we're acknowledging and recognizing the symptoms as a, a, an organic biofeedback loop, biofeedback, biofeedback. So rather, rather than popping a bunch of pills and, 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 and having many different um, um, tests done, we pay attention to what our symptoms are in the first phase and recognize what picture it's showing us so that That's we true. know how to interface with it. And yeah, it, tell, it, 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 it tells us where we're at. It, it shows us where we're at which way we're facing, right? Which way we face and we facing north. Excellent. Let's go. And so it, 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 the symptoms guide us, not the diagnostic label. Now this diagnostic label, you know, the, the label that's placed upon these symptoms, right? can give us clues and hints to what's, what organ is affected, right? But it's important that we push that label, that syntax, that very 
uh, I would say deceitful syntax and put that aside and focus on the specific symptoms that you're experiencing, one is experiencing, okay? And this is also applied to the healing phase. The other set of symptoms that we see here, the fatigue, the warm hands, our hands warm up when we're in healing mm -hmm. because the vascular system is no longer constricted. It's dilated and we got good blood flow going. Our pulse will slow down. Mm -hmm. Our blood pressure lowers. Mm -hmm. We develop edema, swelling, not only at the organ level, but at the brain level. And we'll look at that a little bit deeper. We'll develop fevers. We get hot. This is the warm phase, right? Well, so we'll have an elevated fever oftentimes. There's inflammation. That inflammation often is what causes the pain and discomfort at the organ level, be it the low back, be it the, the bile ducts in the liver. But that inflammation, that watery fluid environment where, where healing is taking place creates extra pressure and that pain is the byproduct. And so we're not going to get into this now, just that we may be able to follow this thread on the different types of pain we experience. This is a whole nother talk that we may want to do, but the quality of the pain is important. Okay. There's going to be discharge at times, meaning there's going to be pus, abscess type of oozing, night sweats occasionally where we're waking up at night and our sheets our our chest are wet right we got the we got the inflammation we got the fever we got the fatigue we got the i didn't put this down but the body aches mm -hmm. these are all symptoms that we all have experienced at one time or another mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and oftentimes we do make it through these symptoms right now one of the yeah sometimes I've, I've made i've made it through all of them yeah right seem, we wouldn't be here if we weren't they, if they we seem pretty them. severe at times with all those you know uh, sure. but it was a matter of the body just uh you again know. you embraced it you you embraced the healing of the body you supported the healing of the body mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you got better you adapted you adapted yeah you got stronger, really, mm -hmm. mentally stronger, mm -hmm. right? More confident, too. Sure. Yeah. So it's, you know, and this, again, this could be another uh, thread that we can explore. But, you know, this whole Darwinian evolution of survival of the fittest and this, uh, yeah. How about survival of the mentally fit? Yeah. First and foremost, what's your mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. Physical fit, strength is important. Yes, yes, yes. But mentally fit is even more important now. And we don't have to explain why, I don't think. Right, Kathleen? No, you have to have you know. a certain mindset now going forward to be in a better position to survive, plain and simple. What is your mindset? Yeah. Now, the mindset of disease puts you at a disadvantage, guaranteed. If you're going to be afraid of so-called disease, you're going to be in trouble, right? But if you have the mindset that the body knows how to heal and that there are special biological programs designed to assist us, you're in a much different place, right? Yeah. Doesn't say it's not going to be a struggle. It's not to say it's going to be, there's going to be some work that needs to be done, but you're in a better position, right? 
you 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 follow me here well yes and i think it, it to me it seems it's the only it's the only avenue well if we want to be healthy and if we want to work with the 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 natural process of of life if you want to be in in alignment with natural law yeah but a lot of people are going to reject it and have rejected this mm -hmm. sure it's not our problem though <laughs> you know it's not our problem uh, we're not here to save every you know people into you know we're we give people an advantage a little step up in the right direction but ultimately it comes from the individual yeah. taking full responsibility of their body of their biological psyche taking full responsibility for their biography and how they got to where they're at right here right now and then change the trajectory of their life based on what they now know as german new medicine the whole trajectory has changed once you embrace this right but again, it takes personal responsibility to make the decision to learn it, to embrace it, and to apply it in our own unique ways. This is the foundation. And we all have the choice. And, and with that, obviously, it's about embracing it with a with a certainty and a trust rather than with any element of fear no. because the fear will will take us away from the capacity to pay attention to to heal to do any resolution to get to the healing process sure, it's going to distract you it's not going to put you fear is is the is the the mind killer yeah it's yeah. gonna and and it it's the tapping into that living intelligence that we all have yeah. and that is around us in our habitat the living intelligence and the, using our mind to embrace this intelligence right Unfortunately, the mind has been so corrupted with all these mind viruses, right? Yeah. And so it takes a bit of uh, what what do they say in the, in the in the computer jargon? So like defragging uh, the hard drive, getting rid, you know, selecting and deleting some files in there that are corrupt. Well, it and, might even it might even be a statement of 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 um, being discerning about what files you even want to let in, and perhaps people might want to uh, take a look at um, how much time and how much absorption of the narrative that occupies their day, sure. and and how much of living actually living life occupies their day, and and. And, and take a very good examination of both and determine really what is their life worth and what is their, you know, what is the value of their choices? Sure, absolutely. And it happens uniquely in each of our, this is a, this, what you're stating there is the application of this work, of this, these principles and the work that yeah. can be done. And, it, and we don't need any external help, but we develop more power. We, we're social creatures. We've been designed to handle the struggles of life with a pack of other human animals around us that support and share in the same mission right this is innate 
And so this feeling of being isolated and doing it by yourself is part of the degenerative culture that we find ourselves in now in the separate in the division we don't need to get into the problem this solution though that we're talking about is we do need we can do it and we're in a better position when we have people around but the fact is kathleen many people don't have that supportive environment around them and so it shouldn't hinder them but it should be recognized as, okay, maybe I do need to get some folks around me of like mind, be it maybe one or two or three people, right? It doesn't need to be a whole slew of people. You mean I don't need 2000 Facebook friends? Oh, there you go. And all the likes that come with it, right? Yeah. Yes. So who's uh, around you? Who, who's around you that supports you already, right? And so a lot of people were in the throes of this conflict shock, right? We're in the throes of our symptoms, you know, and we, we've been told all these different things about why we have the symptoms and we're, we're getting tossed and turned, thrown around in the waves, right? And now we have German new medicine and some guy telling me that you know, there's five biological principles and you know, everything you've been told about disease is all bullshit. And, uh, and that it really stirs it up and set, steady, 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 get steady and look around you. Who do you have around you right now that has been supportive of you, that is assisting you, just like the biological programs are assisting you and lean on them if you have to. It could just be one or two people. But know that, but know that we are designed to be with a pack. And when we're in a pack, we're more powerful. We're able to handle the struggles of life together. And that pack grows and builds, grows. Some people leave, some new people come in. And so again, this is that life that we leading, right? And then there's this trajectory. Now, we're changing the direct trajectory of our life when we embrace German new medicine. Well, and you'll see, just from my own part, you'll start to see a pack forming around you of like-minded people, right? Well, people, people are drawn to what sustains right and what brings about this growth and brings about um positivity and sure, people are people are drawn to strength and adaptability and and uh vulnerability because yes we're vulnerable and we may have to share our vulnerability but people are drawn to strength and confidence and not even we have to start with our strength, our own strength and our own confidence in ourselves, as you said earlier, developing that strength of what with oneself first and foremost, and then people will see that and gravitate to that. Right. But it well, starts with, as you said, it starts with the individual. And we don't, uh, you know, a lot of times people think that when we talk about needing other people around us or like-mindedness it doesn't mean we give up our individuality god forbid you no. know we, we no. continue to nurture that that's the beauty of the individual again it's this symbiotic symbiotic matrix that we're living in right yes it's it and so yes we're not discrediting the individual yeah. but we're not putting the individual at the top anymore it's part of the greater group, right? Yes, and no longer true. hierarchical. We're, we're longitudinal with all, all beings on an equal level. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's, uh, yeah. But yeah, to, to finish up this little rift here with people are gravitate, that people do gravitate 
to confident and strong individuals, especially now mm-hmm. where the heat just continues to get cranked up. Mm-hmm. Right? So again, mentally fit, survival of the mentally fit. Yes, survival of the, men- of the physically fit. Yes, right? But I'm not going to tell some 90-year-old guy to go out and start lifting heavy weights now, you know? It's, it, but physically fit, staying active, moving, getting out into our habitat, connecting. Yes, this is all part of it. A sedentary lifestyle glued to the screen is not going to get you further along. It's not going to put you at an advantageous position all the time. Yes, we are receiving and in, in, in getting a message out through this medium, but don't depend on it. And sure enough, don't let it penetrate your own psyche where you're de- uh, uh, experiencing biological conflicts for something that's going on through the screen somewhere else completely far away from where you find yourself here and now this is very important because that's one of the excuse me one of the most critical things that has happened to all of us is that we have one way or another been 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 pushed been coerced into connecting more on the screen with with all of the elements that have taken place over the last two years sure sure and and so you know people people there needs to be a resistance and a and an embracing of life which we got just get busy get going busy. back to nature get busy living get busy living teaching learning you know using the mediums to our advantage mm-hmm. using this uh way of communicating to the advantage of truth and get it out there but don't get sucked into it yeah don't get sucked into it look stay grounded in your own in your reality where you find yourself here and now and use that reality that you see right in front of you your your screen here right and use that as a feedback Keep your feet on the floor and use that as a feedback to help guide you, not what's coming through the screen Mm -hmm. all the time, right? Yeah. We kind of got off on a little tangent there. I want to finish up real quickly what occurs at the brain level that develop that causes these symptoms to develop because we could we we covered a set of symptoms in the conflict phase. And we covered a set of symptoms in the healing phase. And th- in this particular set is our symptoms that are at the brain level. Okay. The healing is taking place in the psyche, in the brain, and in the body simultaneously. Okay. And so once the psyche resolves it, it goes into healing we're more at ease about the situation. At the same time, the body, the brain, the body goes through healing. You're going to have the inflammation, the discomfort, this fever, right? And then at the same time, the brain is going to go through healing. And in the first phase of the healing, which is that first little dip that we see in this, in this, in the compass, right? That first little dip in that first dip, the body develops edema on the brain level, just as it develops edema and inflammation at the organ level. And those concentric rings that were visible in the heat, in the conflict phase have now be, they become a little blurry and blackened. And it's because of the edema. And this indicates that we're in the first phase of healing. And the common general symptoms at the brain level are headaches, dizziness, and blurred vision, okay? So we have the fatigue, we have the inflammation, the discomfort, 
We got a good appetite. Our hands are warm. We have the fever, the discharge. And on top of that, we may experience headaches, dizziness, and or blurred vision. Now, when somebody experiences this set of particular symptoms without the knowledge of German medicine, oftentimes they immediately go, well, this is something neurological happening, right? something neurological, something going on in the brain possibly, right? And so the common next step in this is to take an image of the brain, the CT scan, right? And, we, and, they, and they're looking, they just look at the, at the brain level. But this fell into our, in, again, the advantage of truth here, because if we didn't have this technology, Dr. Hammer wouldn't have been able to discover what he discovered. But what we see at the brain level is that as we get through the healing phase, we're also going to experience this peak. As you can see, the, 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 the chart dips down in the beginning and then shoots straight up, right? This is what we call the epicrisis. And this is a reset point. This is the reset. This is the body, brain, and psyche resetting mm -hmm. and getting back to normal tonia. This is very important to establish that foundation. The epicrisis is a reset point. The reason why I'm stressing this is because when we go through the epicrisis, again, it can be really uncomfortable. This is where seizures take place. This is where the heart attack takes place. This is a critical moment in the organism's life, really. And again, it's imperative that one stays steady through this process, this reset point. Knowing what the symptoms are of the epicrisis, knowing the purpose of the epicrisis, which is to push out the edema, most importantly, off the brain level and then off the body level. So that edema that was forming in that first phase, now because of this sympathetic push, again, the nervous system pushes this out, takes the, the edema off the brain and takes the edema off the body. And these symptoms, the headache, the dizziness, the blurred vision will start to decrease in intensity. Now, to finish, Because that these symptoms often are looked upon as red neurological flags, right? Neuro red flags for some neurological problem. They get the image and sometimes they'll see what we see here on this image on the, on the right here, this really white area, right? That circle with the white. That right there through the lens of medicine is diagnosed as a brain tumor, a brain tumor. What an example of an unexpected shock, but the shocking news that you have a brain tumor, right? In reality, what this is actually showing us is the accumulation of brain connective tissue. It's the formation of the scar from the impact at the brain level. Oh, wow. wow. The scar of the impact. Not only do we develop a scar at the organ level, we also can see the scarring effect at wow. the brain level. Wow. 
and we can also see and observe the wound, the scarring at the psyche level. And wow. oftentimes, the reason why folks stay in these programs of chronic, let's say, use the word chronic, where they have chronic symptoms that come and go or, or you're constantly there. It's because the scar that's in, that's forming in, at the psyche level gets opened back up. It gets opened by memories. It gets opened by maybe even just discussing the distressful situation, bringing it up, right? When it's already said and done. Again, it's almost separating, putting some space in between the event and our own biological psyche and allow that psyche some time to heal. And we can see here now with this very known fact now, how important it is for people just to take the time to heal. Let time heal the wounds. Be confident that you're healing. Get to work, get busy doing something, right? Distract yourself possibly from the, the healing and know that you will get to the end of the program and the program will be completed and you will be stronger than you were prior to that unexpected distress. That's all I have to say today. And um, for people that want to find me, you can find me at the learning GNM dot com website underneath German New Medicine events in the U.S. We're going to have some more stuff coming out here soon this year. But uh, I want to end here with this picture of this uh, elderly woman that uh, was one of my patients years ago. Wow. She came to me with uh, hip pain and learned German New Medicine. And that's her after a couple of months of uh, knowing German medicine. Gotcha. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just love that picture. Oh, and I, I, I love it too. I, I think you and I are going to be, be that woman at that age. Well, you won't be that woman, but you'll be the man of that, that, that comparable. Image. I gotcha. Yeah. I just wanted that. I've had that picture for years now and uh, have used it prior and uh, yeah, I mean, it could be, I don't think it looks Photoshopped. It looks like a, a pretty oh, no. good picture there. Look at those arms. No, look at that back. Look at that yeah. face and, and the standing leg. No, that woman is strong, strong and confident. She's flexible and she's, she understands the power of movement. That's right. That. She's strong. She's adaptable. She's flexible. And we all have it in us. We just have to continue every day to cultivate that. Well, not only the physical, but the mindset. That's right. And, and, you know, we've been so taught for the quick fix. So sure. when we have a symptom, we go, Oh, you know, we become afraid because of course we're going to expire at the end of a, of a, of this, the results of a symptom. So we go and we get a pill and then that symptom stopped, but then it stops everything, including the body's own innate ability to heal. Sure. So the more confidence we have and the more experience we have from healing smaller and then larger yep. pictures, it really does translate into a lot of very confident and self and, 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 and capable men and women. It's very sure. beautiful. Thank you, Chris, for all the work you do. Absolutely, Kathleen. If you have, if you have any questions now, I think I, I don't know what we have on the way of time, but if you want to ask a few questions or we can leave it at that, it's up to you. But I, I just want to add one last thing to symptoms, because again, this is important and it's this is part of the work, is that it is very easy for one in the early stages of learning German medicine to experience a symptom 
And then that symptom creates another biological conflict. And it kind of puts layer on onto it, right? And so mm -hmm. just to reiterate, be patient with oneself. Be confident in the work. Be confident in the knowledge that you were working with knowledge that is verifiable. It's real science. It's reproducible. And discern as to are the symptoms driving another biological program or are these symptoms that are part of the big, you know, the big picture that's going on. But oftentimes what I've found in the past with working with people is that the symptoms themselves create another biological conflict that overlays the original. Yeah. And that's where one starts. And it happens naturally with the learning of German new medicine and the biological laws, because that unexpected shock that came about because of the manifestation of the symptoms is basically resolved and neutralized with this information that we just discovered, the different sets of symptoms, depending on where you're at and what direction you're facing. Yeah. So I wanna end on that note. And uh, I really look forward to our next conversation. Who knows which direction we'll go, but uh, I love the overall trajectory of these talks so far, and uh, we'll just keep on trucking. Well, thank you, Chris. It's it's really an honor and a privilege to be able to learn German new medicine through through you, because that is exactly what this allows, and it's uh, it's a system that offers so much empowerment. So thank you, because it's it's for everyone who chooses it, and we truly can embrace freedom through this yep. German new medicine. So thank you. Excellent. My pleasure, Kathleen. Next time. Until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>